प्रिपेयरिंग टू लाइव स्ट्रीम हो रहा है दो मिनट मीटिंग इज नाउ ओके वी आर लाइव ऑसम सो लेट्स बिगिन so welcome everyone to this next episode on the series of career opportunities and today we have our speaker dhanraj labba hello and today we have our speaker dhanraj labba thanks dhanraj for accepting my invitation welcome yeah. to my channel and let me introduce dhanraj um, very quickly so he is someone who is a devop and integration expert certified scrum master mba grad from symbiosis and leading a software mnc as a principal solution architect everyone must have heard about albert einstein he is someone who is a silent admirer of albert einstein and lives and breathes one of the famous quote that is important thing is not to stop questioning curiosity has its own reason for existing and yes dhanraj i am also starting believing on this particular quote this yes do not stop questioning do not stop learning and definitely be curious at any age anywhere about anything not only in your professional life but i guess in personal life as well so thanks so much uh, thanks so much dhanraj and over to you thank you sir shalini thank you for the kind words yeah big big fan of uh, of albert einstein and uh, his virtues values apart from his intellectuals i mean uh, no no match to the extent he utilizes his brain power uh, which none of us seem to probably even think of <laughs> coming near utilizing it um obviously so we are here today to talk more about uh, the cloud computing uh, and career options uh, in cloud computing so why don't i just go ahead and share my screen we'll we'll talk to some of uh, some of the quick basics as to what the cloud computing is about uh what it offers how you could choose it as a career uh, uh, aspect and how you could thrive uh, using it so right now i uh, uh, in my work profile i have been uh, uh, using uh, cloud uh, to a larger extent um, i have been using it for various different reasons in my professional life also in during my personal life uh, Uh, even i presume most of you who have joined on this call so they may be directly indirectly using knowingly or unknowingly using many applications which are hosted on cloud so at least in a day whenever you are going to use any app uh, rest assured some of those apps would mm-hmm. certainly be hosted on a cloud so what 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 exactly the cloud what's the agenda for today uh, so basically we would be going through trying to understand what is cloud computing how it originated uh, what are the service models deployment models architecture of uh, a cloud model uh, what are the security concerns uh, cloud clients uh, importance of uh, cloud computing and certifications uh, when you are going to uh, choose this uh, cloud computing as your career options what all options for certifications you would need uh, and where you could do the those and by the by end of this session we'll take some questions and try my best to answer your queries um, and uh, off to uh, the first slide basically what is cloud computing so one disclaimer while i would be quoting some of the examples i would be oversimplifying certain things uh so it would not be uh, in the very uh, true spirit of what exactly the concept or the application may be doing but just for your understanding at a bare bone level it would be something which uh, i would be analyzing so that your concepts or your uh, uh, uh what, what do you say outlook for at the cloud computing is 
uh, is probably at a better level than what it is today. So cloud computing is basically an internet-based computing. Uh, which will, here it has been written in a very large geographical group of remote servers, which are networked so as to allow sharing of data, uh, processing, um, data processing tasks, centralized data storage, and online access of computer services or resources. Any computer-related task, which is done uh, entirely on the internet. So as a paradigm, uh, what cloud computing does is it allows demand network access to shared computing resources. So this, by going by the definition, it, it would, I don't want, I'm not a big fan of using a lot of jargons. Um, so what it, it precisely in a simple terms means is it is a model of managing, storing and processing data online via the internet. So two main aspects, one is shared servers, which are hosted on internet. So whenever we say cloud computing, it nothing has to do about the physical clouds in the sky. It is mostly about the network servers, which are available and could be accessed anywhere via an internet connection. And while you access uh, these uh, these servers, you, you won't be doing uh, any a specific task <clears throat> based on the personas. Personas meaning the end users, consumers, basically who uh, you and me, people like you and me who are going to access certain apps, uh, certain common uh, sources uh, where you would be actually uh, doing maybe shopping online. So you, you would be accessing any e-commerce site, e-commerce uh, application on your mobile device. So that is hosted on a cloud. And we, uh, as a consumer of this, whenever we are ordering or people who are selling, so these are end users who are now consuming these services. What it does while serving these, uh, the e-commerce stuff is, though that is basically computing. It is basically computing if uh, the item is available in store, whether it, uh, enough quantity is available, what is the reorder time? Uh, how would the pricing, how would the discounts? So all those which are managed by the seller would all be applied to it and then sold. So this whole process of selling uh, or completing one transaction is called mostly the processing of data. So this processing of data, uh, like you ask, you're providing your credit card information for paying, and then the app reaching out to the bank or the credit card uh, uh, provider for getting the payment actually into their bank and then providing us the service or the, or the goods which we have ordered. So that's where we do the, the, the transaction and it is all on the cloud. So this is more uh, in a broad concept what cloud computing is all about. When, uh, I mean, it allows users to deal with the software without having the hardware. So we are not having, there is no need of the end user or the service provider or the application hoster to have those physical servers doing all the, the computing that is the transaction handling in their physical premise. So that is not there. So it is all available via shared resources on the shared servers. Everything is done remotely. Nothing is saved locally. Locally meaning on your laptop or on, uh, or the, on the provider. Basically, someone who is owning um, uh, the, the e-commerce website. E-commerce website, when I keep referring to it, it is, for example, Flipkart or uh, Amazon, uh, some of the big names which I which if you take, or even small um, uh, grocery stores who have hosted the, their own application because uh, you might have seen with this advent with this current scene of lockdowns and uh, because of the covid situation people are more and more relying on this online transactions to order food order grocery order their daily necessities online without really have uh, having the need to step out to avoid the virus uh, and definitely this helps a lot uh, for even the sellers. Basically, they don't need a physical shop uh, when they are dealing with a lot of customers exchanging cash and, 
and the goods, uh, thus avoiding even infection to them. So uh, a lot of good business, basically, really speaking, no need of having physical shops, paying rent, instead of that, you are just having a warehouse where you could store stuff and then just distribute from there. So, so these are some of the advantages. I really don't want to go into very detail of these, but those are details about the e-commerce. But this is purely something which you need to keep in mind why the cloud computing actually excelled and became popular so soon uh, in, in the advent of e-commerce. So cloud computing characteristics, basically it gives, it empowers, like I said just now, it empowers people to stay within their house, order stuff. Uh, it also empowers people who are who have created these apps to host it remotely on the shared servers, really not investing a lot into infrastructure. Agility, basically, it is whenever you want to increase the capacity, if there are, uh, if your application, so Flipkart in its initial days may not have been so transaction heavy, meaning uh, n number of let's assume for now uh, in a hypothetical situation there are about a lakh one lakh transactions which are happening every minute uh, maybe when they started it may have been 100 transactions per minute so what this really means is over the period of time when they ex increased from 100 transactions to one lakh transactions or 100 thousand thousand transactions per minute so they really didn't have to think about investing into the infrastructure, increasing the server capability, computing capability, the processor capability, the data storage capability. They really didn't have to think about it because these cloud providers, cloud service providers, as we call, so they really elastically increase or decrease the resources based on how your need is. So you. Uh, so when I talk about, I would be talking mainly about a persona, which is who are people who are hosting their applications on the cloud, who, who are getting into cloud computing. So for them, it is more of elastically they are paying. So it is as good as uh, imagine a situation where you are, um, where you have uh, rented out a house and uh, say you you are a small family a nuclear family husband wife two kids so one bedroom hall kitchen or a two bedroom hall kitchen is what is sufficient but if you have a, a few guests coming in another family another nuclear family coming in then suddenly you, you are out of space so at that time imagine some somewhere you are able to probably increase your floor space meaning if if you have the luxury of having the next door flat available, which is uh, which is probably not uh, occupied, so you could just open this the the door uh, and you could accommodate this family. You could share uh, your living room, your your kitchen with them, and that's how you could you could do that. But physically, it is not possible. Whereas this is the beauty of cloud computing, wherein this. Uh, uh notion of expanding the resources happens seamlessly basically as soon as the transactions start coming in so you could expand all you have to do is subscribe to the next level or the right level of transactions which need to be done also the resources basically the database the computing space the servers all that stuff all that good stuff which is required for your application to succeed or complete and transaction so APIs, API is one of the best things which uh, which is in sync with cloud computing it is an application programming interface. <clears throat> so any 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 call like maybe <clears throat> a transaction wherein <coughs> sorry, excuse me, a transaction wherein a user maybe is trying to access an application of airlines uh, for example let's take indigo trying to book an, an air ticket from pune to delhi so how does that happen first of all you need to check if there are any flights between pune and delhi 
So you're going to make a call to find out what all flight options are available. What are the timings of those? So this is an API call application programming interface. So the airline provider would be providing this via an interface, the user interface. Whenever you're going to click, check availability of flights, there is an API call being made to the database to check based on the schedule, how many, how many flights are available. So those results will be coming in on your screen, on a mobile screen or a laptop screen or a desktop screen. So this is where the API's hosting becomes much more easier. The provider, meaning the Indigo Airlines, if you take, if you just go back to that example, they have the luxury of exposing this API, um, whether it can be consumed publicly, whether it could be consumed only by their partners, so they have that luxury to control access. So access control, what does that mean? Okay, you, not, you do not necessarily have to only go through Indigo's application or their, their, their web portal. So using this APIs, which Indigo is going to expose, what the other, other um, travel aggregators, travel aggregators are some, someone like, yatra.com, cleartrip.com. So these websites, what they do is they collect these APIs from different airlines. So when you're the next time you're going to make a, make an inquiry about flights from Pune to Delhi, you would be getting all the options of different flight operators. Maybe Indigo, Air India, Vistara, uh, so different SpiceJet. So these different airline providers, so all the flight availabilities would be available. So how this happens based on their APIs, individual APIs, and then you could do a price comparison and stuff like that. All that happens with the API. So cost, we briefly touched uh, upon the cost aspect wherein we said, uh, so whenever people, where people meaning the entities like someone, let's take one, stick to one common example of that airlines. So Indigo, SpiceJet, Vistara, Air India. So they are all hosting their apps on the cloud. They would be all sharing this cost uh, when, when uh, paying in subscription cost, which is very bare minimum uh, as compared to hosting those servers within their offices. So it is not just one time cost wherein you are buying a server for the application, the web server where the uh, the app is hosted, nor the database based on the number of users, your users start growing, your transactions start growing, you will need more and more boxes of database servers. So all this stuff, you really don't have to invest in. Those are elastically provided by the clouds providers, cloud computing providers. So what you really have to do is just go and subscribe to these services and host your application. And in that part, it is the cost is shared. So some some resources Indigo would be sharing, uh, you know, subscribing to some resources uh, Air India is sharing. So this is all distributed from from a cloud computing provider. This cost is distributed among these subscriber. Among these, we call them as cloud tenants. So these tenants pay a subscription fee, which is in our local. Uh, colloquial language we call it as rent whenever we are hiring whenever we are uh, uh, renting out a space a house we pay minimal rental charges we don't have to buy that house but we pay a monthly subscription charge that's the cost so that is bare minimum as compared to buying and then maintaining and investing staff to maintain those servers Make sure they are, the, the uptime is maintained. They are always up and no transactions are not honored. So each and every transaction honored is what you will raise your credibility. People will start coming for you to do business. Visualization is basically now more, uh, more emphasis was on how you host these apps. Now with these apps, there are a lot of transactions and based on those transactions, there is a lot of data. And now 
the world has moved on to looking at that data how well you could analyze that data on how well you are doing or how bad you are doing what are the window of opportunities so let me quote an example so if we just go back to the same example of airlines so what are what time do people actually make a lot of those inquiries and where they are located uh, which are the busy routes so this is all you get through the reports so these reports when there is a ton of data becomes to be very exhaustive if if it imagine if you get those all written on a register there would be heaps of pages heaps of books wherein you won't be able to look at those understand and analyze so instead of that this computer which basically uh, a computing software which analyzes dates this data for you and provides you in terms of a bar chart or a pie chart and or a heat map so when this is provided you pin pointedly visually things are much more immediately appealing and easy to process your for your brain so that's where you get to know okay this is the the maximum period of time this is the lean period of transactions so maybe if i do some promotions during the lean period of time if i give some discounts maybe some more people will come during that time so this is how you increase the business so there is a lot of thought process behind all this strategies around promotions discounts stuff like that how they actually grow the business so let's not delve deep into it but this is what the visualization capability is about multi tenancy we just talked where there are a lot of different service providers the airline operators who can share the same space reliability is what we briefly just mentioned so when we said each transaction needs to be complete there shouldn't be any hiccup there shouldn't be any hold up uh, there shouldn't be a server downtime or application downtime or a web server downtime when i i'm talking about these things there shouldn't be any failure whenever on the internet when you are doing certain transactions the biggest dreaded error which you see is 404 or 400 errors where you are getting transaction did not go through page not found so these are all errors which which are most demotivating to the end user as well as the, as the person who has created the app so someone getting this page not found immediately shuts down the browser moves to a competitor basically if you are not able to get through an indigo air air, air flight, flight schedule and someone else would just shut down that go to vista and try to find a search so the so for indigo it's a loss of business so someone moving out from you because your website or your portal is not working so that's where reliability comes in when these servers are managed by a third party cloud computing service provider they mean they ensure the uptime so usually you might have heard you may hear in the future when you're working five nines is what is talked about so 99.999 percent of uptime so that is the magical figure every um, uh, cloud compute service provider would try to showcase that okay we have all our servers up anytime you need so there is hardly any downtime we do uh, maintenance regularly and have backups disaster recovery stuff like that ensure that when whoever is hosting services on your cloud compute server so they would be ensured that no one is ever going to find that for 404 or 400 errors on their application so that's reliability scalability and elasticity is scalability is in terms of application number of transactions so one transaction encompassing multiple sub transactions so making sure that all those transactions go through the processing is rock solid the processor is able to handle you even if the transactions go to 100 lakh 10 or a million transactions per minute quickly they should be able to scale the number of transactions or the number of sub transactions elasticity is how your resources can expand and contract both 
elastic if, if just imagine a rubber band wherein you are able to expand uh, uh, to fit into a box when, once you want to open the box you remove the, the rubber band it doesn't stay that way uh, expanded it contracts so that's when that's exactly what you need when your resources uh, they need to expand when there is a large number of traffic this happens within the day also so imagine uh during your uh, vacations so during the month of may all the flights are booked so that's when there is a lot of transactions happening a lot of ticket booking happening a lot of uh, web check-ins happening on on the airline flights and also you would be checking in making sure that the flights are on time stuff like that so there are a lot of transactions happening during this these holiday periods so at that time that server capacity needs to increase the database capacity needs to increase all these application servers also need to make sure they are able to honor this request so this increase should happen elastically and that is where the cloud server service providers actually do the stuff and once these contract during maybe weekdays or uh, non holiday season so it should come down to your normal uh, regular whatever the bare minimum processing information uh, processing resources are needed so that's on the elasticity part what about security so security is something wherein a lot of not only uh, monetary transactions which are happening but also your personal identity so those need to be maintained in a secure way how secure is the server how secure is the transaction there are no man in the middle or there are no uh, ddos uh, attacks which are happening on the server just to steal some of the data steal some of the financial transaction which is happening or there are there are no man in the middle who who are listening to transactions trying to steal that credit card information to be used somewhere else someone trying to steal your bank information trying to empty your bank account so how well is that cloud resource protected so these are all security measures that the cloud computing service provider actually takes care at their end so you don't really have to worry from an application hosting perspective so this is what they also provide you along with the cloud compute so one of the major security aspect which they they provide in device and location independence so your application should be and accessible from anywhere worldwide so if a person has an internet connection they should be able to reach out to the application anywhere anytime so that's the the uh, the magic or that's the uh, the usb for a cloud hosted application maintenance really speaking i i briefly touched upon that so the cloud provider should be maintaining all these assets so they should be doing regular uh, preventive maintenance so that the servers are always updated the infrastructure is in good health so that there are no downtimes no server crashes no database crashes no application programming interface running out of date not reachable stuff like that there's both hardware and software perspective uh history of mobile computing so 50s and 60s they theorized that the world would want for cloud computing because you might have seen those uh, the the memes basically someone loading an ibm a huge server onto a plane wherein uh the capacity storage capacity is few megabytes leave aside gigabytes but a few megabytes 400 500 megabytes and it used to be a huge uh somewhat something like an uh diesel generator sized uh, server uh which now if you talk about if you talk about your your phones those are around um uh 120 gb 1, uh, 256 gb kind of storages uh, there are pen drives flash drives thumb drives uh, those are very small drives or even the sd cards the micro cards so you, 
hardly the size of your nails so those are those are the sizes which have decreased now and in the 90s we saw advent of vpns virtual private networks efficient infrastructure so good servers and then the world started beginning imagining these e-commerce transactions or all um, the the supply chain management or the crms so all these started evolving after 2000 and in the millennial uh, amazon built very very efficient servers which they put on cloud to be accessed from anywhere and that's where those are called aws now it is mostly not restricted to just amazon but you are aware there are a lot of other companies ibms the dells uh, microsofts of the world googles of the world so everyone has a uh, as a cloud presence so service models uh, basically um, uh, there are three different service models basic uh, one is infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service second i think sorry <clears throat> so service models basically when we talk about infrastructure as a service uh, this is basic service uses uh, uses maintain their software uh, on uh, on this uh, uh, model so what they really do is uh, the uh, the ser servers basically the bare bone servers are where they are provided by any internet service pro uh, this cloud service provider uh, so companies using cloud computing like aws uh, take the lead this cloud computing offers infrastructure as a service and platform as a service to its customers so these are these are the cloud computing providers service providers who provide infrastructure as their service so they they deal with security issues they deal with network and service delays they maintain their, their this invest infrastructure uh, so the cloud providers provide all this infrastructure to host your applications. Uh, so they provide the enhanced scalability, dynamic workloads, uh, basically scaling up and down the, uh, the elasticity of subscribing to these, uh, uh, to these services, how big you can go, how small you want to deal. Uh, so some of the examples, like I said, are Amazon's uh, AWS EC2. Uh, which is enterprise cloud compute. Uh, in short, Amazon calls it as EC2. Uh, there are other service providers, like I said, IBM's, Dell's, Google's, um, Microsoft. So they, they have their own cloud infrastructure. Uh, based and then we we see platform as a service. So what is platform as a service? Uh, platform. Usually what, what it means is uh, this service is made up of programming language, execution environment, and an operating system, a web server, and a database. So on these bare bone servers, which are provided in as an infrastructure as a service, this is one level up wherein uh, the, the programming language execution environment, maybe Java or .NET. So these, program uh, program execution uh, environments or a database oracle or sql server or whatever choice of database you have and an operating system windows mac unix linux so these are, are some of those web servers are basically how you are going to host a web application and a database basically to store the data so encapsulate the environment where users can build, compile, and run their programs without worrying of the underlying infrastructure. In this model, you manage data and the application resources. All other resources are managed by the cloud service provider. So if we, if we see what, uh, what are the popular uh, platform as a service provider, again, AWS, uh, Elastic Beanstalk, uh, Windows Azure, uh, so that's from the Microsoft stable, Heroku. So these are some of the platforms uh, as a service providers. These are basically advantages are cost effective, rapid development, it is scalable, faster to market for developers who are actually developing this web application, mobile application, 
so so faster to market and also faster to develop easy deployment on the web applications so you just deploy and are ready to use are ready to run the traffic through uh what could be the cons basically developers are limited to providers languages and tools uh, that is languages when i say it is programming languages whatever infrastructure you are buying you are bound by what what all languages it is uh, uh, it is supporting and what all tools mainly uh, the ides the integrated development environments uh, or the connectors basically to connect to the to the uh, different aspects of what your application would be using and uh, another major issue which comes out is migration so if you are um, if you if you think okay uh, microsoft azure is not my choice we are not happy with the service and we want to move to aws then we are looking at making some changes to your platform if you if those are very platform specifically developed applications this is not a major thing but right now there are platform agnostic applications also which are being built wherein really speaking it doesn't really matter whether it is azure or aws or um, openshift so they, they that really doesn't matter but certain things like a lock in when you buy the subscription so these are bound by like you do your rental agreements so those are either for a year or three years so you are bound by that so you need to give enough notice and maybe um, a way out when you are when you are going to stop using using these services now moving to saas so that is software as a service so this is an on demand service pay per use of application software to users so you are hosting your app so the end users consumers would be paying as they use so so if i am going to book a ticket on airlines for uh, uh, airlines app i would be paying only for what i would be buying a ticket so that's it uh, from a from an airlines perspective they might be buy they might have subscribed with the cloud compute servers uh, to pay to a certain number of transactions okay we have subscribed for 100000 transactions per day so if we go that if you are within that so maybe uh, on on one day uh, the transactions would be only 90000 in that case you are still in the subscription limit so you don't pay anything extra but if you if you reach to 100000 you you still don't have to pay anything extra but the subscribe the cloud service provider will warn you anything going beyond that you would be charged extra so if we, if there are 100000 Uh, 110,000 calls in a day. Then the service provider may charge you extra for those extra 10,000 calls. So that is pay per use. So they are dependent, platform dependent. They don't need any to install software on your on your personal computer, laptop, or your mobile. So all you need is a browser where you are able to to access the application. run some single instance of software basically the single instance hosted on the cloud uh, available for multiple users end users so as many users more the users more the merrier more transactions more business so that's how it the application should be cloud computing is cheap because it's a shared service right i mean there would be multiple uh, airlines who are using that software and paying for th- that hardware and the software of course uh, so these are shared the costs are shared between all these users so that's the reason cloud computing is always cheap computing resources are managed by the vendor the cloud service provider is maintaining all the servers and these are accessible via a web browser or a lightweight client so accessing is much more easier so examples could be google product suit so google has a lot of suits right i mean you could do google drive you could use google calendar you could use google emails uh, you could use uh, microsoft office on google 
right? I mean, the PowerPoint presentation or the one which I'm using right now, or an Excel sheet or a Word document, all these are posted on Google. Um, or maybe Salesforce, where, where is a, it's a sales platform where you, um, various companies uh, kind of uh, host their selling software on, on those Salesforce, via Salesforce. Uh, software as a service, basically, it's uni uni uh, advantages are universally accessible from any platform, no need to commute, you can work from any place, if you have a good internet connection, you could work from anywhere from home, you might have seen most of your parents right now working from home, uh, so that's the beauty of this, so you, you really don't need to go to the office, you can work remotely, excellent for collaborative working, you could have right now what we are doing via this YouTube uh, streaming, basically we are we are able to collaborate. We are doing this webinar on an on online platform. Vendor provides modest software tools. So, so most of the software tools, like I'm presenting on uh, on a, a, a PowerPoint presentation on Google. So that, those are all which are provided by the vendor from Gmail, uh, from Google and allows multi-tenancy. Multi so this is, these are shared ones. So you could have multiple tenants uh what are the issues with this mostly portability browser issues browser compatibility like uh chrome uh, internet explorer uh, firefox all those won't behave the same so you need to make sure your application services to all these different browsers equally and portability is moving from one platform to another well you need to be make you need to make sure your application is programmed in such a way you need to invest more on that uh, so, so that the portability is seamless. Internet performance may dictate overall performance. Of course, a weak internet somewhere in the remote area where the internet is weak, your services will also be weak. So that's the biggest uh, downfall which we are looking But in the coming days where we are talking about 5G internet, uh, so these problems will certainly go as the time uh, goes on. Uh, the 5G, 6th generation, 7th generation internet would be what you just can't imagine. Who would have imagined, first of all, we used, we always used to see that loading um, circle going around a lot. Right now, we don't see that. It's like Zoop, you download your uh, movie or song in a matter of microseconds. Compliance restrictions. So restrictions on data sto storage and sharing. Uh, right now, you may have heard about a term called as GDPR from uh, European nations. So that is general data protection uh, uh, mandates which they have. So those are something which you need to take care of when you are hosting your application on cloud. You need to make sure it is compliant to this stuff. Um, so quickly, we uh, we are running short on time. We'll uh, reach through certain aspects. So I will give you some concepts now that I, I presume you are you are a bit comfortable on understanding what really cloud computing is. Deployment models are public cloud. So whatever is hosted uh, on AWS or publicly available applications like uh, any airline applications or e-commerce applications. So those are public. So these could be generally available for any users. Community cloud is specific organizations for specific community, a developer community, developers, and again, a subcategory meaning developers specializing in only mobile applications. For them, a community or a middleware uh, integration community where they are integrating all these applications to talk to each other. So private cloud is something which is a cloud, again, specific to a single organization. One single organization, different departments within those organization or different business verticals within that organization would be hosting their applications and for consumption within their network. It won't be available for the general public outside of their organization because that way that it is set very private based on um, access models in a private cloud. Hybrid cloud is something which brings in 
good from the both both of the world public as well as the private cloud so some things which need to be very very secure within the organization those are hosted on the private cloud and some things which they offer to or they want the general users or users outside their organization to access so those are available on the public cloud so both of these set up within an infrastructure are called as hybrid clouds private cloud rentals so once you see uh, once you specialize in a private cloud and you want to provide those for any other organization to host their private data or the private applications so you are going to rent that space to only a specific single organization those are private cloud rentals uh quickly think through the architecture what it looks like uh um, yeah we have some questions sure and we take or do we take it in the last uh so if these are relevant uh to these slides i really don't want to wait for that long uh, we can take take uh, whatever are relevant to these slides any general questions maybe we'll at the side then okay does that work um, sure okay Fine. yeah so no it's something different so you maybe you can continue okay perfect yeah. uh so we are talking about architecture we so what exactly uh, does this cloud have when we say it's an imaginary uh, whenever we say cloud it's an imaginary thing where we have a set of um cloud service basically a cloud platform uh, a cloud storage that is database cloud infrastructure so th those are uh, billing virtual machines a uh, cloud service example a queue of uh, the api calls which are uh, which are coming in um a, a cloud platform is basically a web front end um uh, your web app uh, web application servers or application servers cloud storage is the shared databases any any flavor of database which is provided by the cloud of service provider and into cloud is something cloud of clouds so that's a bigger bigger plethora where various multiple clouds could be talking to each other on sharing the resources or transactions from one one application to another cloud hosted application so this is an inter cloud and how this is done is mainly an a deeper aspect where it is touched into cloud engineering so we could have uh, we could have touched that but just in the interest of time and since this is a precursor for you to understand what is cloud computing so that uh, making your career choices becomes much more easier so we would just touch that you could probably do a deep dive later on so we'll quickly see what is security and privacy considering cloud computing uh, the biggest is the data protection every person who would be hosting their applications web applications or mobile applications or any of their application servers so they would be always concerned about their data privacy what that means is there are many tenants hosted on the same cloud infrastructure you don't want uh, as a, as an indigo person maybe I, if that is my application i don't want my uh, subscribers my loyal subscribers who Uh, who book their tickets on indigo flights to be known by vistara so vistara shouldn't get an access of hold of data about any particular uh, user who has subscribed to vista uh, to indigo's uh, application so that's where really speaking protection of data protection of user user identity so that's where the third point is identity management so there are different roles and responsibilities also for users in a particular organization who has hosted that web application so those need to be intact so they they need not see something which they are not privileged to see within an application administration part physical control is how you you can either increase your resources based on the increased transactions or decrease based on reduce number of transactions 
so you should be always in a commanding position how you should be easily able to scale and uh, shrink uh, so that should be very easily accessible meaning there should be interfaces provided by this cloud service providers and you should be able to either increase decrease add resources remove resources see how much of resources you have been using uh, what's your billing right now based on the usage so all the transparency and ease of use instead of all being done over a terminal doing programming interfaces that's not something is desired physical and personal security so that we we talked about that your applications should be securely held um, not uh, not from someone doing a physical theft of it that is also one case but also cyber attacks we talk about we see a lot of cyber attacks which happen so securing from those personal security is something which your data post, data security personal identity management security so those are stuff which which in itself are specializations availability always uptime uh, always the services should be available um, so any time of the day 24 by 7 365 days so it should uh, the services should be up and running because uh, the world has shrunk your application although it is hosted maybe by a provider in india so indigo is an indian uh, airlines uh, but someone in the us if they are trying to book a ticket uh, when the when there is night in india um, during the day in in the us they are trying to book tickets for their relatives uh, so that should be always available it shouldn't be like okay it's night we uh, we close this that's not the case should be available 24 by 7 any day of 365 number of days so that's the flexibility and uh, which is available and should be uh, provided by the cloud service providers we talked about uh, protection of the servers we talked about data protection what about the application the application also needs to be secured from cyber attacks the application also needs to be secured from any unintentional unintentional violation to bring down your application capabilities so that's something which is which needs to be provided by the cloud application so this providers privacy uh, so you shouldn't be dependent only on one web hosting server, uh, server. there should be also uh, multiple places where it should be set up and those should be private those should not be easily accessed by any of other people who are not privileged to do that and the, the last point is legal issues so legal issues uh, if i quickly take another example like maybe banking banking software so uh, or the uh, share market uh, transactions so there are compliance issues there are Uh, the government bonded legal uh, compliance stuff wherein they expect that these transaction related stuff do not go out of india so those should always be physically present in india so these transaction related data logs which are generated data which is being stored in databases all that is restricted within that geographical uh, region basically uh, respecting the laws of the land so all these legal issues should be compliant by the cloud application server for uh, cloud uh, compute uh, servers provider what are cloud clients basically all the devices laptops mobiles desktop wherever you are able to access these applications from whatever devices uh, all these are cloud app, uh, cloud devices or uh, uh, cl- called as cloud clients uh, any company specific applications so which use private vpns uh, v- uh, vpc vp uh, virtual private cloud all those are called as cloud clients importance of cloud computing so we cloud we use clouds every day we save huge amount of data make maintaining information easy uh, make security easy maintainability and sustainability are better uh, i think we have 
dived in enough on all these uh, aspects. So what this is the most important section certifications. So when you decide you want to do a career in uh, in managing these uh, or you want to do a career in cloud computing. So there are various streams, various certifications provided by each cloud service provider. So we are we, the screen on the screen, the slide which we are looking at, then <coughs> sorry, AWS certification that is Amazon Web Service Provider. Uh, so there are different uh, uh, streams. So different streams are for there is a DevOps track, there is the security track, there is an architect track. So if you look at what you start with is a foundational a foundational track where you become a cloud practitioner once you study uh, the study material and give an ex online exam. So you are AWS certified cloud practitioner. So what you need for that prerequisite is six months of fundamental AWS cloud and industry knowledge. Uh, once you do this, it is pretty easier to do this certification. And as associate level certification is one year of experience solving problems, real world problems and implementing solutions using AWS cloud. Uh, so you could do it into the architecture stream uh, you, where you become AWS certified solutions architect, or if you go through a DevOps uh, uh, stream, then there are two different aspects. One is DevOps developer or system operations administration, sysops administrator, and uh, a professional is something which you do after a lot of experience, maybe two years of comprehensive experience, where in day, 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 night, you're working on AWS and you give an exam for AWS certified solutions architect, or if you want to do it on DevOps, you get a DevOps engineer. So some of these uh, additional specialties which AWS has come up recently is in security, database, machine learning, data analytics, and advanced networking. So these are further uh, advanced certifications which are available from AWS. Uh, similarly, Microsoft is also a, pro pro a cloud service provider, they call it Azure. So there are again different streams, different levels. So you start with a developer, administrator, and a solution architect. Uh, you become a data engineer or a data scientist or an artificial, artificial intelligence engineer, DevOps engineer, security engineer, or a functional consultant. So these are different streams and different levels of certifications from the Microsoft Azure stable. There are also certifications from Google. Google is also a cloud provider. It is called as Google Cloud Platforms, GCP. So here you could do a foundational cloud digital leader, associate is a cloud engineer, and professional streams go to cloud architect, cloud developer, or data engineer, um, then DevOps, security, network engineer, uh, collaboration engineer, machine learning engineer. So pretty much you will see a same, similar kind of streams and levels by different cloud service providers. So where you want to excel, where you want to do your specialization, under what stream, under what cloud service providers specifically, you can choose. One thing which I want to really stress out these certifications never demand you to be uh, to have maybe an engineering degree or any other professional degree so it doesn't demand you a basic graduate in whatever stream in whatever uh, uh, department they have done uh, in arts commerce science uh, engineering all of those can apply these if you have interest if you want to make a career out of this uh, if you want to study in detail and to get into a working mode on this all that is possible these are various new as uh, aspects new avenues i would say for you to excel as a career i made a career out of uh, cloud computing uh, so right now if you ask me personally i am into now machine learning uh, RPAs and uh, data science. So, so most of it, 
uh, after doing a lot of building block exercises on SaaS hosted applications on the cloud. So sky's the limit and don't expect that uh, the cloud is going to go away soon because all that matters is it is going to expand to newer avenues. People are going to share. They have got used to this shared platform, not investing into big boxes and maintaining those in-house. No organization does that. Um, more and more e-commerce is getting popular. You might have seen the importance in the COVID advent right now. So this is something I would encourage you to consider as one of your career goals. Uh, please feel free to reach out to Shanli Ma'am on Tech Data basically if you have, um, if you if you further want to pursue anything uh, uh, on this end on uh, your careers. With that, I'm I'm just going to probably stop and uh, see if there is a chance to take any questions. Thank you so much, Sanraj, for such an interact uh, for such an in-depth on cloud computing. Yes, we do have a few questions. Um, I know we are over time, but can we spend around 10 minutes on the questions? I am perfectly fine. Uh, I am perfectly fine. Okay. You can stop sharing, Dhanraj. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so we have a few questions like, um, which cloud solution is best for small businesses, about 10,000 users? Yeah. So if you are asking me for a choice between uh, AWS, Google GCP or Microsoft Azure, so really speaking, all of these, uh, um, there is one more, uh, I mean, not really one more, there are multiple more, I'm not naming those. Uh, there is from IBM, there is from Dell, there is also from Red Hat, the, the platform is called as OpenShift. So these all are tried and tested and really speaking, most of them are a choice of cloud service providers. So big organizations really go to them. Now, who would make what choice? Those are, that's a difficult, uh, I would say rather something by choice. So if you are a Microsoft shop, you would always prefer to go to Microsoft Azure because uh, your uh, programming uh, platform is all same on Azure. If you want to go to uh, Amazon Cloud, so those are those are different uh, different um, uh, databases which are available on Amazon. If those are something which your application supports, your application needs, so those could be done on AWS. So really speaking, what your application does, I would say that should govern uh, the platform and not the number of transactions because these are all robust application platforms, uh, cloud platforms, you could just go easily. Uh, again, for the volume, if you are talking about low volume, so there are subscription levels. So entry level subscription levels. So sometimes uh, these are limited resources which are provided free of cost for you to test if you really want to go in for a commercial license, then pay some small subscription fees based on your number of transactions which you foresee. Uh, although if you're going to, your application is going to shoot this uh, subscription level, the service provider won't shut off or won't cut off the traffic. Rather, they will come back and tell you, okay, okay, Mr. Customer, uh, you are consistently breaching your subscription levels. Why don't you subscribe to the next level? So that is where they will come to you. So, so your decision-making point should be based on what technologies you are using, whether that is supported by the mm -hmm. cloud and mm -hmm. uh, your subscription level should take care of the traffic volume. Okay. And um, which certification would be useful for a QA? Yeah, for really uh, in um, in in the real world right now, uh, uh, I mean in the professional life, I would say don't um, don't uh, label yourself as a developer or a QA because those re roles are really going out fast. So what you really have to be uh, is. Uh, QAs right now are, uh, if you, if, uh, I mean, when you have asked the specific question, 
I would say they are not manual testers anymore. So some level, some good level, I would say, of uh, technical exposure is there from application programming. So programming <clears throat> exposure is there because of the automation in testing. A lot of automation has come in. So really speaking, you should always look out for the developer stream or the architecture stream. So that's where uh, you should be able to make a good career out of it. This is one of the good questions that I liked. Um, that is, are there any free cloud service providers? Free lunches? Yes, of course. So uh, whenever you are going to any of these cloud service providers, they won't charge you upfront. So there are always certain level of subscriptions which are free of charge. You won't be able to get the full buffet lunch. Um, so it is like a tasting session. So where you can go pick up certain, uh, certain services, certain databases, which are available for an entry level where you can play around, you could try and try a test. You could also uh, not really, if you don't have an application, but for the certification, you could always go and try your hands, you can get your hands dirty to a certain level. Just make sure whatever is free, you're clicking on those and make sure you're subscribing to those things. And uh, then we have, uh, so you said that, um, for the foundation level, AWS foundation, it was six months of cloud and industry knowledge. So say, for example, I am just passed out from the college and I want to do AWS certification. Can I? Of course you can do. That's one, uh, one thing where you would be much more um, uh, when AWS is recommending for six months, what they are trying to say is you, you have spent some time using the platform so you have got comfortable understanding the concepts, understanding what really happens. So that's where it comes from. But if you are studying well for these exams, if, uh, there are study materials uploaded by AWS itself. So if you understand those concepts going through the, the study material or the videos, the videos are also excellent stuff. So if you mm -hmm. understand those theoretically, uh, you could certainly go ahead and pass with five flying colors for these certifications, not only foundational, even till the uh, professional certifications of solutions architect or DevOps. And um, so different cloud, cloud technologies, do they fundamentally differ from each other, like for Windows, Unix, Linux? So, uh, so all these cloud providers do certainly provide a mix of all available platforms because the application nowadays are getting platform agnostic. So really speaking, they don't, anyone who is creating these applications, they don't want to stick to a certain platform. Earlier, it used to be, uh, there used to be a term called as LAMP, that is Linux, um, uh, Apache, PHP, Apache and um, uh, MySQL and PHP. The database. So for these stuff, uh, the, this used to be a standard uh, mix wherein you could be able to create an application, host it on an, uh, on a web server and uh, use it. But nowadays things have changed. There's a lot of technology mix available. Uh, but in mm -hmm. essence, when we talk about these, uh, there are certain names like Microsoft, they have been doing all their uh, their applications for ages now. So they, they would be always supporting their platforms irrespective of the applications which would, they would need or not. So that is one stop shop where you would say, okay, if I have built my application using .NET technology and would need certain kind of database, SQL Server or something, Microsoft SQL Server, you, just, you can just go blindly and select Microsoft for that. But if you have predominantly used open source software, you could still go end up with Microsoft's uh, Azure cloud, or you could go to AWS or, or any other OpenShift, Red Hat Red, OpenShift or Google Cloud. So really speaking, that doesn't differ. Only thing is you need to make sure your application adaptability or is for the, the, the various choices of databases available with, with these cloud service providers. There's two more questions. One is 
any basic limitation of cloud really speaking no limitation as such the 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 platform is ever increasing ever expanding there are new new things which uh, of course are not so new now there is serverless technology which is coming in uh, machine learning artificial artificial intelligence data science um, you know big data and all are are things of the past right now but these are all all uh basically all on cloud so so there is there is no limit uh, technology is always going to get better and better with the coming days these are going to be the building blocks of course anything would be developed more made more capable more secure more scalable on the cloud it is not going to go so soon uh, although i would hate to say that i mean that's the beauty of the it part is there is always some disruptive technology who would have thought in the 50s and 60s that there would be so many people who would be actually using computer leave aside people looking at those that used to be one big glass uh, room where you would be able to just peep at uh, a desktop now it is a common thing that even kids are using devices like mobiles and laptops okay. and uh, if if i want to do aws is there any prerequisite in terms of having knowledge of programming uh i would say it never hurts if you have programming knowledge uh but really speaking you won't be doing any any stuff like java or dot net language stuff on aws so the whole concept of this cloud provider is through an user interface someone really not very comfortable a novice person who does not know programming should be able to do to work comfortably on on the cloud service provider so that's it so you really that's not a prerequisite although it doesn't hurt because there are certain aspects if you if you go on aws there are if you want to do write some connectors of your own to integrate so you are going to use lambda functionality so lambda comes with its own programming interface so if you have your concepts clear about programming it becomes much more easier otherwise there is a small learning curve it is not difficult uh, the rest of the functionality you really don't need any programming knowledge okay let me just check once for any other questions on youtube live so yeah i guess we answered all of them and uh, we are over time as well so yeah. thanks so much vanraj uh, for your time and for your experience sharing as well thank you so much shalini and thank you everyone for listening patiently to me uh, non stop uh, talking and shalini i would say as uh, uh, i am uh, very grateful to you for giving this opportunity and certainly i respect uh the the series which you have started when i heard about this um, i was really uh, uh, really impressed you helping the stu students or uh, the students fraternity uh by giving in give them perspective from different industry leaders uh and thank you for the support to it's my pleasure sir thank you so much